All right, this is our final project uh, for a water valve that's being controlled by a S7 Siemens PLC uh, using a PID loop. What we have here is the PLC itself. Uh, we have some analog inputs for from the uh, water flow meter. We have some outputs to the actual valve itself that controls the water flow. Uh, we also have these two wires going to the potentiometer which we're using as a set point. The resistors are there to uh, limit the current. And this is just the power supply. It's all being controlled through Ethernet so hence the hub and all the network ports. This is our flow meter. This is the connection going to the water valve. The water just flows into that basin and gets dumped. So as the valve turns on, the flow meter measures the flow, sends that back to the PLC, and the PLC uses that to adjust the valve so that the flow rate matches what is preset in the PID loop by the potentiometer. Okay, here's our HMI. Um, so the auto mode controls the, basically it reads off potentiometer and uh, goes through the PID loop and controls the process variable um, using the set point that's set by the potentiometer. The manual mode just controls the output to the valve directly, it bypasses the PID loop um, and everything so all we'll see here is just the process variable because we're directly controlling the valve without any input from the PID or the PLC and then the local set point is uh, basically using the PID loop uh, but it's ignoring the potentiometer setting we're actually inputting the value directly using these up and down arrows also so for example when it's in auto mode if we turn this up we can see that the set point is increasing and we can hear that our dirty valve is opening and the PLC is going to try to adjust basically adjust the process variable and open the valve far enough so that the process variable is approximately the same percentage okay. I think it's good <coughs> Alright, so then say if we just shut it down, we can go to local set point. Well now, our potentiometer does nothing. But if we go and push up here, we can see that our set point is increasing because these buttons are physically inputting a higher value into the set point. And it's the same idea, you know, the PLC will try to adjust the flow to match the set point. And when we go to manual mode, it doesn't really matter what the set point is. We can actually just control the output of the valve directly. We can shut it down completely or turn it up. So, and if you put it back into auto mode, it's just going to go back to whatever the pot setting was. So. So that's our implementation on the HMI. Now for the uh, for the logic, you can use uh, Jonathan there. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Show the. You can see here we got two blocks. We got the main block and the cyclic interrupt. OB30. Uh, that's where our PID loop is. It's there so that the PID isn't called every cycle. Um, now what we got here is basically the PID loop itself and you can see there's a set point, inputs, outputs, um, and the state. Those are the main uh, variables that we're using. The set point is the calibrated output from the potentiometer. The input is, FT is the flow input from the valve or the flow meter and the output is the uh, output to the water valve itself. And then at the top we have an examine off contact 
Um, that's basically to disable the PID when we're in a strictly manual mode. We also have states and that um, needs to be set to the proper uh, state for the PID when um, depending on what state you're running. So if it's an auto mode, um, why don't you put your mouse over there? No, no, back to PID. Yeah. If you hold your mouse over it, it should show you eventually <coughs> the numbers that correspond to different states. We used automatic for the auto mode and zero for inactive. So now if we go to our main function block, or main loop I should say, uh, what we got here is, this, uh, is a block that calculates the input from potentiometer and scales it so it's uh, from 0 to 100 because our HMI expects to have 0 to 100. <clears throat> so instead of you know 5,000 whatever something to 25,000 which is the analog conversion the potentiometer voltage we want to make sure that it's going to be between 0 and 100 regardless of what setting. Uh, then next we have uh, calibration of the output which we're taking from the analog input of the flow meter so the flow meter supply a voltage to the PLC which is then converted to uh, a number and we're scaling that uh, to be also 0 to 100 and that's our process variable that's where that number is coming from and then down here we just have some logic that essentially this is yeah this is uh, the logic that allows us to control a local set point by adding a number to the to the scale pot value which came from above um, so when this is active it actually disables the actual potentiometer input and calculation and it instead takes the scaled variable and just adds to it then we have uh, some cleanup right here which is if the potentiometer reading because potentiometers are not uh, always that accurate, sometimes you might actually, after scaling, uh, get below zero or above 100. And this logic here makes sure that nothing does that. So it will always be between zero and 100. Um, uh, let's see what we got here. Then we're, this is the states, and we're basically, uh, depending on what state we're in, we're moving those numbers into the PID state variable, which is uh, something we talked about earlier. <sighs> um, these uh, addition um, blocks here are also for, they, they work in a similar manner as the, uh, the scale pot, the local input, but they're adding to the output directly. So this is our manual mode when we're bypassing the PID. We're essentially just adding to the output number, which controls the flow valve directly. So it's increasing the number and the valve opens, decreasing it and it closes. And all these contacts are there to prevent other modes from being active um, during that. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Alright, <clears throat> we're going to use a different camera because uh, our other one died. But before you can actually run your PID, you're going to have to tune it. And the way you do that is to go to the technology object and click on the PID compact object, which matches the name of your PID loop. Uh, so ours was PID compact 6. So here it is. Uh, then you have commissioning over here. Double click that. And this is where you start your tuning. You want to control the mouse there, John. You turn the set point to somewhere where normally you want it full, but you're going to kind of set it in the middle. And then you hit start. And you see there the PLC is going to try to calibrate itself. It's going to send the input and output. And after a while, no, you, you're not going to go there. Hit, hit the start button. Alright. Okay, 
is it? I think it should eventually change to start, right? <coughs> After it runs for a while. Just go ahead, go ahead and hit stop. Okay. Are you going to get this prompt? You say yes. And we're going to turn off our set point. And you're going to want to upload the PID parameters. And that's your calibrations. And then you can go to the PID parameters and see what they are. Um, these, these are what we put in. So they may not, in fact, they will probably not match with what you have. Um, go back to basic settings there. So no, no, no. Right there. One thing is make sure that your PID um, settings all match whatever process you're trying to control. There's a bunch of pull down menus here. This actually should have been done first. Um, once, once it is, then you can make sure that process that you're trying to control is what the PLC thinks it's trying to control. All right. All right, before you can actually run anything, you need to uh, commission the PID block. And you go to the technology object, which is uh, right there. And you see there's two names. That's because this is actually PID block 6. So technically 5 was the prior one that we worked with. So you need to go into 6 or whatever you call yours and then go to commissioning. When you double click that, you're going to get this window and that's uh, basically where you do your tuning of the PID block. You're going to have to turn your set point to normal. You want it open all the way but our particular valve doesn't actually reach. Um, the full 90% or 100% so we're just going to set it at somewhere towards the middle and then you start the tuning by hitting the start button and then you see there the PLC will do the rest kind of on its own and down here going to try to match your set point to your output. <clears throat> okay. 